Uh, good morning. It's uh, uh, very early in the morning here. I'm with my friend, very long time friend, Daniel Schroeder. Very long time. <laughs> Daniel and I have known each other since 2001. Yeah. And so most of the time, uh, people talk about Americans leaving America to go into the world to become missionaries. Uh, and today, I'm with Daniel, really one of the rare breeds of people that have decided to stay in America, to become a missionary in America. Mm -hmm. So just before we even talk about this, can you please just tell us who you are, about your family, where you're serving, and all that good stuff. Sure. So my name is Daniel Schrader. <clears throat> uh, I uh, am married to Meredith, nine years, got married right before Dennis, and Allison <laughs> did. Uh, and we have two beautiful children. Lily six, Jose is three. We serve the Lord in Northeast Tennessee, so we're in the big town of Jonesboro. Mm -hmm. um, so you came to Denton 2001. Same time you did. Yeah. So you came to do the program. What was in, in your future? Were you thinking, I'm going to do ministry, or I'm just going to do this and then go back to engineering? You're an engineer, right? Uh, I'm a physicist. Physicist. How yeah. different is that from an engineer? Uh, about three classes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take CAD. That's what it amounts to. Okay. I had a few more theoretical physics and they yes. had a few more CAD classes, yes. but uh, same kind of concept. So uh, I knew that I wanted to be in full-time ministry. So yeah. I was in Campus Crusade in college when I was first discipled for the first time. And as I was interacting with lost people and sharing my faith, you know, God just opened my eyes to the world and went, you know what? All these people around me don't know Jesus. They don't have the same background. They don't have the no. same exposures that I had. So was that in America? That was in that... America. Okay. No, so, that, so that was definitely here. I mean, so, I... so there is people who don't know Jesus in America? There's a few of them, yes. A, a few. few. <laughs> <laughs> there was right. sarcasm in that comment. Okay. okay. Yes. So you, um, you, 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 you came to the program. Mm -hmm. uh, you went through Dallas Theological Seminary. No. Through I, the missionary training. That's right. Uh -huh. So I didn't do DTS. I got accepted to DTS and I passed. I... Uh, left the program and went to Russia and did missions work with college kids. I was on staff with Campus Crusade for a couple of years and spent a chunk of time learning to share my faith in a cross-cultural context and uh, building relationships and learning language, but uh, just being actively involved in frontline missions. And frankly, I wanted to go back to Russia. That was my plan, but I really wanted to transition out of college ministry. Uh, I've always, uh, since interning in the missions office in 2001, had a passion and heart for church leader training. And so I made the decision. I interviewed with Adam Richardson, who was then the field director for Serve Russia, and uh, said, hey, I, I would love to come back and serve with your team. I've got to start on language and culture, and I'd love to transition on to the Denton Bible staff team. And I interviewed with Adam. About four hours later, I picked up a short-term mission team that I was doing the administrative stuff for. And a young lady came up to me at the train session and says, hey, my name's Meredith. I know your brother. Can you get me a pocket, a, a little bag to carry my stuff? I said, sure. Uh, three years later, I married that young lady. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were just talking at breakfast at how many South missionaries met their wives in the field. Yeah. Now we have Greg Travis, who met uh, mm -hmm. Caro. Caro in Argentina. We have Dennis Omondi, who met Alison in Kenya. We have you, who met Meredith in Russia. Uh, and you know why it's because yeah. Tom says <laughs> like if you invest yourself in following Jesus yeah. run hard after Jesus eventually you're going to pick up your head and your spouse is going to be running hard after Jesus right next to you they're going the same place doing the same thing okay we, we're okay. getting off subject so let's come back we go off subject. so we <laughs> so you're you're in Russia uh, uh, yes and at this point you're thinking this is my life I'm going to spend the rest of my life in Russia yeah Okay, uh, what happened? The, so we, as Meredith and I got engaged to be married and then ultimately married. My wife was in graduate school at the time. Uh, Meredith is a physician assistant. And so Denton Bible said, hey, we'd love for you to uh, be married in the States for a little while, before, you know, for a year. And I'm twiddling my thumbs going, what am I going to do? At which point, seminary became the right choice. Yeah. So I went to Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary and got my MDiv. And we flew to Russia in 2008, interviewed with Adam again, and talked about coming, and frankly, in 2010, started raising money as I got close to graduation to go back to Russia on staff with Serve. Uh, and in the process, uh, about four months into that process, Adam calls and says, hey, Russia's changing the visa laws, and we're all getting thrown out of Russia, uh, so we need a plan B. 
and uh, Meredith and I had a, okay, wait a minute, I'm about to graduate. Uh, we're getting ready to go to Russia. She's now out of grad school and, and trucking along. And uh, we interviewed at that point with Denton Bible and came back and met with the guys and said, okay, what's our plan B? And we talked about some of the other fields and they said, would you consider going to East Tennessee? <laughs> okay, that, that's a big, a big shift. <laughs> that's a big shift. No, From no Russia question. to East Tennessee, and East Tennessee is in America. Yeah, no question. Okay. Uh, so you meet with people, mm -hmm. and you raise support as a missionary. Yeah. When you say that you're going overseas to Russia, to Kenya, to all these exotic countries out of America, it's very romantic. Is, it, is there the same romance if you talk to them about going to Tennessee? Uh, no, certainly not. So um, there's what? nothing romantic about Tennessee. Although it's pretty, <laughs> and we have pretty places, so it's it is romantic if you want to come and visit. Yeah, uh, it's simply different. Uh, and God has been exceedingly faithful to raise up a group of people that partner with us and have come alongside us and supported us for the last six years. Uh, so the the truth is, it, it's always a challenge, but God's always faithful. Uh, frankly, if God calls you to something, God's not broke; He funds it. And so that we we've, we've been faithful to work at the support raising side, but God's been exceedingly faithful beyond that to, to bless us and keep us on the field. Yeah, so do you, do you find it, when you tell people that you are a missionary in Tennessee, what's the response that you get from them? Um, why? Because if, if I say I'm a missionary in Kenya, that uh -huh. makes sense. Yes, sure. But if I say I'm a missionary in Tennessee, there is like a million churches there, there are Christians there, why Tennessee? Well, which is often the follow-up question. So yeah. if you say, I'm a missionary in Tennessee, why are you there? And, but honestly, most of them have been to a small church yeah. that has a group of senior adults and nobody else. And the church yeah. has declined to just this group of low people um, where the, they may or may not have a pastor. Somebody's in the pulpit, and he's usually terrible. And let's just be honest, and nobody be offended by that. Um, but he has no training, yeah. uh, or he had training in the 1940s, yeah. and he's still preaching, but he doesn't remember his sermon points. Uh, <laughs> and, the, and those churches have simply declined to this little tiny group of people. And you go, you know what? Like, they don't have a plan for how they're going to turn around. They don't have a plan for how those churches are going to come back to life. And there are some folks who think those little churches ought to just die off. I mean, yeah. Let's just be honest. There are some people who think, uh, well, they've, outused, they've outlived their usefulness. They aren't willing to change and be young and hip, so they should just die. Yeah. Um, and we now, what, what do you say to that? Uh, to which I say, those are God's people. <laughs> uh, they are as important to the kingdom as any other believers. Uh, frankly, when I, the first time I preached at West Hills Baptist Church, where I'm now the pastor, to this little group of 10 people uh, who had not had a pastor in at least five years, and they hadn't had a pastor who stayed 18 months in 25 years. So it's been a long time since they'd had any sort of consi consistent pastoral care. You know, I, I had kind of a moment when I felt the way Jesus felt when he looked out on the crowd and said, these are like sheep without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. They are people who love God, love Jesus. But they don't have a shepherd. They haven't had one in a very, very long time. Yeah. And they're doing the best that they can, mm -hmm. but they simply haven't had someone to guide them. So we will be okay to say, what do you think about the mission field? We should not exclude America. Absolutely not. So America so, is a mission field. Without question. And uh, so just some of kind of our demographics. I'm in the buckle of the Bible boat, man. We're, we're, we're Appalachia. Uh, we're in Tennessee. There are uh, people if on. If you're out in the hallway, if you want to make your way inside, we'll go ahead and uh, start. We are at a missions conference, so they are calling us back in, but we're going to wind we're gonna, up this. We're going to wind this up. <laughs> so we're in a place where if you drive through East Tennessee, you're going to see picturesque little churches on the hillside. Well, and you're going to. Three, You're also going to see little conference. churches on every street corner. I mean, this is kind of where we are. But the truth is the overwhelming majority of those churches are in a horrific state of decline, that they uh, all have less than 50 people. The vast majority of them are white haired. The young people aren't coming. The young people aren't going to church. Uh, if they're going to church, they're going to one of these, just a handful of kind of hip young churches. Uh, and I, I'm neither hip nor young. Uh, so I'm not in that category. All right, Daniel, it seems like we're out of time, but uh, thank you for coming. Really appreciate your, uh, your time with us. Uh, what we are trying to tell people is that being a missionary in America is not 
being He's less of a missionary. Not so, at all. Yeah. So, so we have this huge mission field of little tiny churches where we're trying to help those little old people that Jesus loves engage the mission again yeah. and, and re-engage the community around them, which by and large non-church because frankly their kids aren't coming. And so how do we reach the generation that we've just quit reaching? Yeah. And that's what we're working on. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you again a little bit later with another missionary and talk about other things. Thank you so much. And he's having a hard time.